long pursuit of Carmelo Anthony has finally paid off as Houston has traded for the future Hall of Famer. But he won't really be a bull as the team is expected to wave Melo before he plays a game give him a chance to join a contender. So we asked the fans, which team will Melo most likely end up on? Lakers, Blazers, wow. Heat, or somebody else? 59% of people think he's somehow gonna end up on the Lakers with LeBron. I tend to agree. What do you think? I, uh, there's mutual interest apparently, but I dispute that somewhat because if there was mutual interest, the Lakers would have made the uh, uh, space available and probably would have taken him by now. They don't so. want to waive anyone on the Lakers no, roster, no. according to so reports. So I, I wonder if in some ways Magic Johnson doesn't want it to look like LeBron is pulling the strings and saying, here, my friend needs a hand, let's throw him a lifeline. Yep. And the Lakers are weighing up whether or not Melo can come in there and disrupt things because he wasn't able to fit into the role that the Rockets wanted him to do. And Chris Paul's his good friend and he wasn't able to do it there. So I... I, I understand everyone does think he will probably end up at the Lakers and that's, you know, mathematically, I suppose, the most likely place. But I'm not sure that the Lakers really want to go down that road right now. If there were a lot of suitors, he would have been somewhere already. He's been sitting out for two months. And I think the Lakers is probably the only viable option unless, again, we've got these teams that are amongst the, uh, the reported rumored teams. The Blazers or the Heat take on a chance. I, I just don't see it happening. If there were a lot of suitors, somebody would be doing it right now. The Heat, why would you take him on and to have another older scorer coming off the bench? You already got Dwayne Wade in that role. Well, maybe, I mean, we keep talking about LeBron may want to help out his buddy Melo. Well, what about Dwayne Wade helping yeah. him out? And they have a roster spot open, uh, so they wouldn't have to wave someone or cut someone like the Lakers, in theory, would have to unless they do some sort of two-for-one trade. I mean, they and look, the, the Heat, like back in Summer League, was one of the teams talking to Melo and his reps after the Thunder buyout. So there's some history there. They at least kicked the tires around on that. I don't think it's that far-fetched. You're right. Now, is there minutes there? Can Melo give you anything? Maybe Melo can still win you a quarter, a half, or whatever in a playoff series, and the Heat will likely be in there in the East. So I, I, don't, I would actually pick the Heat from this list because I don't see the Lakers happening because what you guys are saying makes sense. It would have already happened mm. in theory, but they like what they're getting from their guys that are on their one-year deals, be it your McGee's and your Lance's and your Beasley's and, and Rondo and so but on. But if so. they open a roster spot for whatever reason, if they make a two-for-one trade... If they make a two-for-one trade, then fair. I, yeah. I think that yeah. would be the only option, really, at this point. If you're the heat of the Blazers, wouldn't you have already made it happen? Yeah, you would think so. All right, final one, Trey. We're smack dab in the middle of All-Star season as starters will be announced on TNT this Thursday. As such, we're nearing the start of snub season as there are only a few Eastern Conference backquarters who are locks. So we threw four of the best guards in a poll and asked the fans who's most likely to be an East All-Star snub. Eric Bledsoe, Kyle Lowry, Victor Oladipo, or D'Angelo Russell. 49% of people think Russell won't be getting the call. Ooh, yeah, this is... I disagree with them. You disagree? I disagree. I think D'Angelo Russell is in because it's when you do it which really stands out. In the month strong. of January, the Nets are 8-2. He's getting up 24.7 assists on 45% from three. But he's also clearly been their best player and has propelled them into the playoffs. And I think that's going to sit well with a lot of coaches because this guy was a misfit, sort of cast away from the Lakers. People kind of gave up on him. Spencer did when he got the big contract. And he's responded really, really well by carrying his team. And I think he gets in. I don't think he's going to be snubbed. I mean, look, he would get my vote right now, and we will make our, our reserve picks once we know the starters this Thursday on TNT and all that. But I, my worry with coaches when they make these all-star selections, they keep it pretty simple. They usually think of two things. One, was this guy already a former all-star? Yeah? Okay, well, that's good. And, and two, is his team good? You know, he contributes to a good team? Okay, that's good enough for me. And what I'm getting at here is, like, Guys like Lowry and Oladipo, Lowry especially, four All-Stars, Oladipo makes the last year, they're both on better teams than the Nets, mm -hmm. that I could just see the coaches going, yeah, those guys are locks. Put them in, put them in, put them in. And that then I get into your Bledsoe and your Russell where it's going to be much more difficult, I think. The way the coaches go about this, or their assistant coaches that fill out the ballot go about this, that I could see it being Russell despite... You know, the numbers that he's putting up and the success recently that the Nets are showing. He would he would be in there for me, but I think he might get snubbed, unfortunately. Yeah, sure. And to compound on that, a lot of the coaches go old school and they say, well, the Raptors are at the top of the standings. Yeah. We need two of those yeah. guys. I, I wonder with the Bucks situation, do the votes sort of split between Eric Bledsoe and Chris Middleton behind Yanis yeah. Tepacumpo? I wonder if, you know, which one gets in. D'Angelo Russell, a lot of those coaches haven't even seen D'Angelo Russell, though, when but he's been smoking. now, though. Maybe. Because I think you're, you're, I think you're over, overvaluing the currency, how much these guys pay attention to this month. You know, well, like coaches obviously have seen yeah. the Nets make their run, 
But I, I do think that they do go a little bit old school. Oh, this guy has been an all-star before. That and often, Sandy. That's the Joe Johnson sort of rule that kind of he kind of got in because it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we know he's been a good player for a long time. But if you look at what Russell has done for the Nets, he's had those streaks where he's hit seven threes, eight threes, oh, yeah. carried them. And, and it's turning into victories. It's not like he's just putting up num numbers on a team that's like eight games below 500 or anything. He's actually really taking that team. But, and Kyle Lowry started off incredibly well. But he's really sort of struggled with his shot, yeah. and and even the, the assists have dropped as well. So he might be the one just on the outside. Yeah, in. it'll be interesting to see. Let's hear from you guys. Jump on Twitter hashtag the starters with your reasoning. When we come back, 3D joins us live from OKC. Set up that juicy Blazers <laughs> Thunder game. No clue where. For the show, it's an NBA TV players only night tonight. Blazers Thunder, eight o'clock Eastern. To let us know what's going on in OKC, it's the Grill Daddy himself. See those grill marks? Uh. 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 3D! Hey! Yeah. 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 What's up, guys? Uh, you always <laughs> feel your intro, but today you're really feeling I it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm really feeling it because I need the grill mark because it's so cold in OKC <laughs> today. <laughs> we'll warm you up here, 3D. Uh, Carmelo Anthony officially been traded to the Chicago Bulls. There's some rumored teams that might grab him when he inevitably gets waived. The Heat, the Blazers potentially, along with the Los Angeles Lakers. It's Blazers Thunder tonight, so let me know, how does the fit, do you think, work with the Portland Trail Blazers? Believe it or not, guys, I do like the Blazers more so the Heat. Why? Because I think the Blazers need a third person. I know Nurkic has gotten better and playing better basketball this year, but we know Carmelo Anthony is a proven scorer, so it takes so much pressure off of C.J. and Dame Lillard. We know they go one-on-one -on -one a lot. We know the assists have gotten better the last few games. When you get into the playoffs, you need to throw the ball to somebody and go get you a bucket. We know Carmelo Anthony can do that. So of all the teams that you're throwing out there, I kind of like the Blazers. Interesting. Speaking of those assists with the Portland Trail Blazers, they've been moving the ball the last couple games. 30-plus assists in consecutive games for the first time in over a decade, which is nuts. Are they making an effort, a concerted effort, to pass the ball in Portland right now? Key word, guys, is effort. They are making the effort. But when you make that effort, you have to start believing. I think guys are starting to make some shots. Other guys coming off the bench, uh, getting to the basket, knocking down wide open threes. So it will take some pressure off of C.J. and Dame. But until those guys make shots consistently, until Nurkic, like I talked about earlier, until he starts playing consistent basketball, we know he's a walking double-double. That's what ke keeps the effort going, and you start believing in your teammates. On the other side, the Thunder have won a couple in a row. But January has been an uneven month for them. They've been poor defensively after starting the season so hot. They were the number one team in defense for a long time. Is there anything that you can use to, to explain what the heck is going on with their defense? Not, not really one thing versus the other. I mean, a few opponents came through their home court and scored, shot the ball, basketball very well. Uh, and man, thinking of the Lakers off the top of my head. So there are certain teams that just came into their building, played well, and you go on the road. And then when you don't shoot the ball on the road, we know Russell Westbrook hadn't shot the ball particularly well. Things like that can hunt you on your uh, total team defense. But when you have a guy like Paul George playing on the MVP level, they're still winning ball games. All right, we appreciate it, 3D. We'll see you tonight. Keep warm down there, would you? Ooh, man, ooh. <laughs> Chilly here, man. We got to get you a grill so when you're doing your hits, yeah. stay warm. Yeah, we need a portable grill. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, All right, when we come back. The segment sponsored by the Green Egg. Yeah, we're going to put an order in right now. We'll get that out to 3D. When we come back, a supersized edition of Weekend Whoopsies. Battle Out West, coming up at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. 3D joins us from OKC. We'll ask who he has more confidence in staying in the top four in the West, the Thunder or the Blazers. Plus, we'll go live to Toronto to find out what's happening with Kawhi missing a third straight. Right after the starters, it's 10 before tip presented by Ford. Back with the starters, we didn't have a show on Monday, which is why we're going to hit you with a super-sized, long weekend edition of Whoopsies. The hoops and the bloops to the extreme here. Dwayne Wade tosses his shoe to the fan. This lucky fan grabs it. Oh, my God. He's Whoa. so lucky. He's so excited. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just bit it. Um. <laughs> Former 76er TLC gives Ben Simmons the coldest of shoulders before OKC Philly. Oh, teammate right here. You good? How you been? Huh? You good? I'm 
You doing well? Yeah. Good? Feel like you don't want to talk to me because your teammates around. You don't want to talk to me no more? Kimo Tate doesn't want any of them. Uh, Kings Henry Giles has to be unmummified before he could check in. <laughs> what is going on here? Henry Giles, a young guy. Harry. 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 I keep on calling him Henry. <laughs> he was young when this clip started. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> He's aging like Buddy Hield very, very quickly. Uh, defense on James Harden has gotten very creative now because he can't stop him. Josh Hart, <laughs> hands behind his back. He's no just... touching. Uh, it didn't work. He just went right by him. Then Lance just reached in anyway. And got the end one call. Bold okay. Strategy. Yep. Well, Corey Brewer tried something else, knocked him over, what? and then really played prevent defense. <laughs> and then went for a flop when Harden pushed back. I mean, there's a bit of everything oh. here. I love this right here. <laughs> this that. is Brewer's first game, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You guys earning the contract. Luka Doncic was ejected for the first time in his young career because of this kick. Boop. Didn't really get much for his ejection right there. No. Just a light, light Whoa. kick that uh. went into the crowd. Yep. So he was ejected and fined ten thousand dollars because the ball went into the crowd. Westbrook gets the fake on Frank. Bye, Frank, and then lets everybody at the street know. Whoop. <laughs> yeah. Does the actual fake by Frank? Scores and then I did this fake. Remember this? And then fake again. MSG was chanting for their old PG Raymond Felton and his OKC teammates loved it. <laughs> Stand up for PG. Wow. Even the security like, guard is cheering. Yeah. Look at crowd favor. He had a great half season in New York yeah. once upon a time. <laughs> is it like 10 years ago? Back to Luka Doncic. George Hill gets a little bump on him, and Luka goes flying into the camera woman on the baseline. Yeah, here's the shot here. Whoa! Whoa. Right. A couple of Luka. nights for Luka. Everybody was okay. They were checking on each other. She was checking on him. <laughs> Luka's checking on her. Okay, we're all good. All right. Everybody's fine. Get a little laugh about it. Hawks PA announcer introduces Torian Prince as his teammate, Kevin Herter. At guard, 6'7 from Maryland, number three, Kevin Herter! <laughs> That's not Kevin Herter. Torian plays it well. Oh, man. That's very funny. Bulls and Cavs played each other over the weekend. It wasn't pretty. Mm. It'll from, get better from here. From end to end. No, no. No? <laughs> oh, boy. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. That's not the same deep. possession, is it? Uh, this is three straight possessions, <coughs> one sequence. We're going back oh, down. This, oh. this well, basketball is so the bad, I'm coughing. Kyle Korver thinks this Damian Lillard shot goes in, so he just steps out of bounds, but it was an air ball, Kyle. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the realization of him and Crowder at the same time is yeah. so funny. Yeah. It melting into the ground. It looked online. <laughs> I, I see what's going good. on, Kyle. It did look good. Stephen Curry here could be the worst possession of his NBA career. Whoa! Oh. He bites it. It gets uh, worse. Give more it than back two. to him. It's yeah. fine. He's going to bury it. Uh -oh. Wow. That was way off for a Steph Curry shot. He was going to give us something pretty there. He recovers well. Always relocating. Yeah. <laughs> Wide right Whew. for Steph, unfortunately. There we go. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a very solid play. Is it solid? Very. Fantastic.